Hello everyone, my name is Skalti and welcome back to our Satisfactory Let's Play. It's been far too long since the last one and uh, I'm excited to be getting back into it. Uh, someone graciously gifted me a 4070 Ti and <clears throat> uh, it's really exciting because one of the challenges I was facing uh, that kind of caused me to not want to make content was the quality of it because of the update to Unreal Engine 5 frame rate not being quite up to snuff with the 1070 that I was using at 1440p, etc, etc. Um, so long story short, uh, that confidence and desire is back. Um, <clears throat> so this episode was recorded for quite a while ago. It's literally, it's just okay. Uh, but I did want to include this content, uh, specifically what happened during this episode just so that way everyone's up to speed with what I was doing uh, to bridge the gap between what we are currently doing, uh, at least with in terms of recent gameplay and what I've recently recorded. So I already have two additional episodes on top of this one recorded that just need to be edited. So yes, more is coming. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you all are as well, uh, especially for some lumens. Um, that new lighting feature is a dream to play with, uh, especially on the TI. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I digress. Uh, yeah, last we left off, we got our next tier in the elevator complete. And so we were working on oil processing and uh, we have what we need. So let's go ahead and get that plugged in. And that's new too. Interesting. Thank you, Rita. <coughs> so, let's take a look at the refineries. Wait, uh huh? Oh, there it is at the top. I need 10 motors. Okay, no problem. Um, I did do one little uh, adjustment between this and the last episode. I've added in a spot for encased industrial beams, but it seems like I messed up something in the AI pathing for the truck, uh, which is a little annoying, but I can fix that later. Man, these things are so big. But let's take a look at recipes and see what we want to do. Um, Oh, we do have the alternates, which is kind of cool. Uh, something to consider for some builds, especially these pure solutions up top here. <clears throat> um, so we have our base. We don't have any alternate recipes for this tier, uh, specifically for plastics and rubbers. So we're just going to work with the defaults for now. And uh, looking at plastic... 30 oil in, 20 out, 10 heavy oil residue. And then let's also look at rubber, 30, 20, 20 versus 30, 20, 10. Okay. And I know we have the residual where we can use polymer resin, which we can make. Uh, wait, is there nothing to do with the heavy oil residue for input. Oh, okay. Heavy oil residue can make fuel or we can just make straight fuel with polymer resin, resin output that can then go back into making uh, the alternates here along with some water. So we just want to get something basic set up. Um, there is, let's see where our nearest oil node is. I think it's the northern up here. So in that direction, let's wait and see. Bueller. There it is. So there's one node Oops, I don't know why I just pinged. Oh, this shows up on the map now. 
Ooh, and it tells me the purity. That's really exciting. Um, I do want to get closer to over here because I know purity temp. Interesting. I wonder if that's a, a bug just because I had the map open. Um, I do want to explore toward the northern side um, a little bit more. So I'm thinking... We'll go check that out. I'll just put this down for now as a way, waypoint. Um, highlight. Cool. So I'm going to head over there and take stock of what nodes we have. Or actually, I wonder if we just wanted to get a basic setup. I wonder what the best way to do that would be. Maybe we can just take stock of like what we have going on actually and next I mean I know there's some pure nodes over there right so um let's just take a look at the recipes one more time and just account for tapping a single maybe two pure nodes and kind of seeing what we want to do with that so that way we can at least get into ooh let's be a little bit more intentional and purposeful with this actually I need to slow down a little bit and be a little bit more prepared going into this. So let's look at our next milestone that we want to unlock. So this, I think, well, we're going to hold on tier six. Well, it might <clears throat> excuse me it might actually behoove us to work on this here and manually craft the heavy modular frames I know it's not optimal um, but the only reason why I say that is it's not a heavy lift to get the Mark II. I mean, I guess actually the consideration is what do we need for Mark II pipes to actually build them? I think... I think it's plastic and copper sheets. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's not heavy modular frames in any capacity. It might be for the pumps. Um, but the thought here... <coughs> the thought here... Sorry for that short, I'm with coffee right now. Um, not the drink, like coughing coffee. While well, I am drinking coffee. Um, it's not that major, made, like big of an uplift to just get double the flow rate right out like early on for when it does come time to like actually make plastics and oils for like computers and any future needs like I feel like that would be worth it I'm curious about the, I don't recall this maybe this is something this is definitely new to me here um I don't remember making liquid biofuel. It's really interesting. I also never really messed with the packager either, but that's really simple. <coughs> <coughs> oh man, I hope I mute out all these coughs. It'd be awkward if I don't. Actually, wait, I can do this. Okay. I have a, there's a button on my audio mixer that can make a really high pitch noise. I can hopefully try and search for that more easily to identify my cough points. Um. Or actually, maybe we do go industrial manufacturing and get trucks and relying on a truck to then, like the 48 slot inventory, to then be able to drive to distant, more distant locations with a handful of resources on us. Uh, seems like a pretty strong solution. Plus we'd also think of the manufacturers so we can start automating computers and 
bunch of the frames, so I think we'll do that. So I think it's just a matter of, let's just balance the production of plastic and rubber and have a semi-temporary solution to at least get us started and get these all unlocked here. And then we can kind of revise as needed. Um, and we'll just go that route. So let's account for, we'll call it, we'll tap two pure nodes. I keep hitting the wrong keybinds. Um, so let's anticipate two oil extractors. And then let's just double check the recipes, which I think I should have saw the refinery up over here. Also, I'm really curious to have figure out how I want to kind of build around the idea of the refineries. I wonder if it's a less vertical approach just due to how big they are, or just maybe I just modify the overall look at the factory to accommodate, but... Um, so let's just look at base recipes, and then we'll deal with the heavy oil residue to just make petroleum coke, and then we just sink it that way. Um, although we could use it to power itself. Um, I'm not sure what the burn time is for petroleum coke. Obviously, I can see it says used as a less efficient coal replacement. Um, so we can maybe get to that part when we can. Um, or actually, hold on. Let's see if we can build a coal generator. Let's see. I'm in the way of my truck. Hopefully it doesn't mess up too much. I wish, yeah, I wish you can see maybe in the library. It will show us the burn rate. No, I think that would be a nice quality of life change is showing us the, the burn rate of these resources, how fast they are consumed without actually having to plug them in. But <clears throat> I digress. Okay, let's just focus on the plastic and the rubber. Wrong recipe. <clears throat> so if we do 30, we just break it down to an even split. We don't need to be making fuel quite yet. I think we just focus on the plastic and the rubber. So we'll assume 10 refineries per node. So we will do 10 refineries. And then we need to account, I'm assuming the refinery is heavy oil residue in. Or do, let's see, fuel. We didn't unlock. Did we unlock? No, we did not unlock fuel generated power. Get rid of that for now and bring it closer to us. Um, <clears throat> why do we feel like maybe now that we've unlocked that, there's something in the map for it? Unknown chemical element. Initial planetary scans have found an unknown non-metallic solid chemical element. R&D is requested. I have no idea what that is. Um, Fungus-like vegetation. Okay, so then... Did I miss something in here? There it is, expanded power infrastructure. Oh, that requires computers. That's why, okay. Then yeah, we will not worry about that. Um, however fun that might be. To get and have power, um, we'll just, like, like I said, rely on the petroleum coke. So if it's 40 in, <clears throat> it's just a breakdown of 40. So let's look at the outputs, so. If we're doing 10, we're going to be producing 100 here and 200 here, so that's 300. So then base 40 in, we would need to be able to consume 320, so that's going to be 8.5. Wait, 20, oh, nope, wrong one. So it's 100 out. 200 out, so it's 300 total. We need the capacity to burn at least 300. So the next step up, you know, so it's 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240, 280, 320. 
Uh, so 320 is, you know, 320 divided by 40 is 8. So we're going to need an additional 8 refineries to properly create all the petroleum coke. And then we need to consider belt speed here too. Um, and how many awesome sinks we're going to need to actually consume all of this. But then we can also burn it too. But we're also going to need water, which we have access to if we're going to go to the northern oil fields. So we know we're going to need at least... Keep doing that. Um, nine... 19 refineries and then I think we're just gonna sink so if we have 300 so 120 times 8.5 divided by 270 or 1020 divided by 270 so we would need four because we don't have the Mark IV belt, so we would need four awesome sinks. <clears throat> and then... We got the oil extractors. We're not going to worry about the water extractors. We don't need anything else. We're going to need... Uh, a truck station. To transport. Probably a tractor. Yeah, we'll do a separate tractor, or... Yeah, we'll do a tractor and, and pipe everything back to us. Um, I don't know, maybe we might need a couple fluid buffers, so I'll just add... I don't know, 10 onto here. Uh, probably switch up from standard to industrial storage for each material. And then just do your, you know, your household products, essentially at that point. So, if we look at the list, um, we have everything we need, which is good. I am going to grab, let's see, where's our copper sheets? 480. So, we don't need any of these encased industrial beams right now. Uh, actually, sorry, we need 230. But I can take this. So we have our 230, we'll sink the rest. To free up some inventory space. That feels like a lot of copper sheets. Put that back actually. Um, we'll just, yeah, we'll do... I think a thousand should, well, no. Better have a little bit more than, you know, we're gonna need a decent amount of cable. Eight, one, uh, we could probably put a stack back. And then, just double check. Plenty of concrete, reinforced iron plates we'll keep as is, and we'll just rely on Mark III belts for everything. Um, so then we just need motors, steel pipes, and rotors. Easy enough. Uh, just do a full stack, put a stack back. Okay, got enough motors. And then steel pipes. And then I think, just kind of speaking generically long term, um, you know, the, the idea would be once we kind of get the Mark IV logistics, I think that would be a good point to pause on continuing progress and focus on oh i think mark ii belts are actually steel pipes not copper sheets so i think it's like steel pipes and i think plastic um that sounds right so um 
We'll run power later. I just want to get the build set up. Um, but I think what would be nice after Mark IV logistics are acquired is to then build a central a central hub, essentially. Um, with like get rid of what we have here, kind of rework all of that, and then start to tear these down. Um, because at that point the Mark IV belts will really come in handy. And the other thought that I had was not centralizing everything, um, but the idea of utilizing, uh, which I'm surprised I haven't even talked about until now in the episode so far, is the blueprint system. Um, I did mess with it a little bit, not a lot. I did a very brief random live stream. And the thought would be... Uh, Smelt things at the very least. Smelt the materials on location. Uh, unless it is something that could be cre created using... I'm going to stop by the KTR and pick some up just to have it. Um, using the, um, the pure, like the refineries to create the pure ingots and whatnot. Um, you know, just smelt everything on site essentially, I think would be kind of a, a nice way to do things and creating a blueprint of an on-site location that can process 480 ingots per minute. Um, I think would be the way to do it. Oh, is this literally sinking everything? No, I think these are... This is just a sinking. I have no split off for storage, do I? Okay, I mean, I don't, I'm not like craving K2. Oh, here we go. That works. I just gotta get a full stack. Cool. Plenty. Oh, see, I just tried to do the slide jump and it did not work. Um, but yeah, crafting, you know, processing the 480 ingots on site and then belting those. Um, I am open to the idea of a mega factory. Um, that's a little intimidating just from the logistic considerations. Um, or it's doing what I can to process something as much as possible on site. So maybe I'm not, um, I'm bringing in a crap ton of iron plates and, and screws and, um, rods copper sheets, cable, like all of that stuff. Like the, the tier one items are processed on site and brought in and we kind of go into like a sushi belt type system. But even then, um, I don't feel like that would be uh, fun. So, oh, that's right. This all, hmm, this all changed. All right, let's do another scan and see where we have some pure if any, I'm assuming the node qualities stay the same throughout here. Ooh, we just pinged those down there. Didn't ping. Maybe we have to go closer. I don't know of... You might have to just kind of... Bear... Oh, yep, we're falling. All right. That was a lot more damage than I expected. Don't fall. Um, I know if we land in the water, we could be okay, but I don't think I can make that jump and I'd rather not. Like, that seems like it's too shallow. Up. Oh. Okay, good. <laughs> Maybe we just try and do this slow and steady. Although I do have... Let's go and chew through some of these. Okay.
Okay, the AI is messed up still. No, it's not. Well, I mean, it is, but that... Not enough space. Do we even really need this? The grand scheme of things? No, we don't. Alright, let's re... Oh, oil normal? Alright, let's see if we can repaint and find some cure. Nope, we're just... Oh. Okay, let's drop an icon over there. Which I can no longer see now. We'll keep this one. We, whoops. Head over here. Yeah, they changed up all this. I completely forgot. <laughs> Which is funny because, you know, I, I did explore it. Looks like they still haven't fixed the visual stuff either. Wow. This is... This isn't experimental either. This is just live. You'd think they would have caught this? Like... That he's just walking on the ground? It's almost like this wasn't originally water. Strange. Hm. Anyway. I wonder if this is even maybe the better place to do it then. Like I know like the gold coast is still there and hasn't changed much, but from my past experiences I would like to reserve that that coast strictly for power via um turbo fuel. So Here. Normal. Okay, let's head up to the pier. There might be one more over there. If not, we'll just spread them out. But we do. I would. I would like to just simply rely on the pier for the uh, simplicity of things, even though it's a little further away. Okay, so we got pure. Is there another one out there? Okay, so we have pure over here and a pure over there. So let's just mark that quick. Wait for that to go away. Um. <clears throat> so I guess the other consideration is Maybe we pipe the oil out of here and not try and build in this environment. Um, just based on how busy it is. Um, I kind of also wish I had a jetpack for some vertical navigation. Would be kind of nice. Um, building a pipeline over to there from here is a bit of a hike. Also, I didn't realize there's a little moon. A little satellite revolving around that planet. Or maybe it's a satellite around a satellite, if that's not another planet, but actually a moon of this planet. Um. Hmm. Like, it would be easy to just kind of build up, right? And pump the oil up into the refineries, make what we need, get in, get out. But then the other consideration is the transportation of the items out of here after refining the oil into those items. So I think, thinking long term, the goal here is not to manufacture 
It's simply to extract. And we bring things... Oops. Bring things over to the desert. That's definitely a hike. The other option is we can just channel it out into the open water here. And just do some over the water processing. That's always an option too. And just get it out of this terrain and just build up on the water because we do have plenty of space to just build on top of the water here. That would also be nice because we would also then be able to keep the water extractors localized for the the residual plastic recipe, which requires some water input along with the uh, resin. Um, so yeah, I think let's let's do that. Let's I guess before we lay a foundation or lay the primary foundation, I'm curious to see what. We need size-wise per refinery um, with the consideration of using pipeline floor holes which I do have unlocked. Yes. Fantastic. Let's also go into production here. Uh, we can drop that. We can do... Yeah, we can just do a refinery. Uh, so we have input output. Let's just line it up. So we have one, two, we'll call it two and a half foundations. So let's actually shift it. And we'll base it on this. So that's where we had it. White on the edge. Bump it up once more. And then if we do it on the foundation, oh, we can actually go up even more. So let's just build it next to it. Oh, we're gonna get a floor too steep. So if we do it here, we should. Might even be able to do it. Oh, yeah, this is good. So if we do the floor hole, I'm assuming we do it here on the seam and here on the seam. We can get a reliable Input output. Visual appearance. We could technically bring this in one, I would assume. Um, but we're still encroaching. I guess actually, is it worth? Let's see if this, oops. Oh, okay. So three foundations is what we need. However, it's not just a clean three wide. Or is this maybe like the, um, no, it's not like the coal generators where you can kind of clip them into each other, which would be super convenient. Um, oh, I guess it's because of the wide protrusion right here. Um, so let's just double check our belting floor holes then. And make sure that these will... Yes. Okay, so it's three foundations long. And we can do it, we'll call it one and a half, because we can then do... Let's see, that's the... Three lines is input, right? Yes. So if we do it on the half, that leaves us a comfortable amount of space to walk between. Um, the consideration too is any sandwich layers for this, we'll need to do double high like we did the coal generators because we want to make sure that we have a floor dedicated to piping logistics and then a floor dedicated to belting logistics. At least more often than not, that's how we're going to have to treat it. And so if we wanted to do 10, preferably all in the same facility, we'll have these on the top floor, logistics underneath, and 
the storage and truck underneath that. Um, so then we'll do 10 in a row on each side, but then we also have the additional eight. Uh, we don't actually, okay. Yeah. We don't need 19 fineries. We need, uh, 18. We need the 1010 and then the 8 for the 320 to consume the 300 heavy oil residue that will be a byproduct of the system. Um, so that works out in our favor. 18 is a nice number. Uh, logistically, it's not that bad either because it's... Um, oh yeah, the output is, by the way, is going to be... Two, we're making 200 in each, right? 200 and 200 okay yeah we're making 200 of each per minute that's a lot um we're also actually going to need an additional awesome sink for the outputs of those two so we will need 18 refineries that can be done in two simple lines the output will be a little different which is totally fine um, so we will need, let's see, we'll call it three plus a foundation front back. So if we did, what would be an easy way to do this? I could probably just do this, right? Um, so that'll be a foundry and that'll be a foundry. And then... I have a thing for this. We can do it in a row. Right, so that would be one. We're doing what? What is it? Eighteen. So that's nine on each side. Um. So nine on each side, plus a foundation in the middle. That's eight. So it's going to be eight of these blanks between. So nine plus eight is seventeen, plus an additional two on the border. That's nineteen. And then. That should be fine because then everything underneath is going to be compartmentalized. So we're going to need a 19 by 9 build. So I'm going to put that in the notes. Edit to do list, public notes. Uh, we'll do plastic, rubber, build. 19 by 9 foundation for. Uh, uh, five, technically, I think. Awesome sinks. I know it's in the thing down below, but the numbers might shift after we're building and deleting and stuff like that. Um, 18 refineries. I think that's, I think that's it. At least that we, that we know of for now. Um. So let's just go ahead and delete all of this, and we're going to go build... Off-site, that direct, oops. I'm gonna go build in the water. Um, I think the other consideration too is making sure I can build. So how does this, let's see if I can do this. So it's going to reset each time. So actually, if I switch... my foundation to a 4 meter by default, I can just start to slowly build up out of the middle of the water. I know there is like a way that you can make yourself walk on water. 
Also, I like how my hands out like that, holding a barrel nut, but... I also like that there's... I still can't see the water when you're swimming in it. It's like they just, like, need to adjust the swim height a little bit. It's like your eye level is, like, perfect for the swim height. That might be, like, the default value they set for it. It's almost like it's better just to swim underwater. <laughs> oh, it's you naturally rise up. Alright, so let's go actually over towards here. Where we have the... Hill here, it's a little faster to get the foundations down. Actually, I might even be able to just stand on it, to be honest. Maybe? Might just be high enough? Hmm. Just shy. Okay, so here's the trick. Oh, that wasn't that tricky. Um, I wanted to make sure I could build it, snap it to the world grid. Uh, which we did, so that's good. Let's begin. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and just get this built up. Uh, if I just like show literally this whole process. Um, this is gonna be a super long video. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get the base foundation set up uh, with what we discussed and figured out. And uh, we'll go from there. So some progress, um, we got some foundations down and um, I'm opting instead of doing like uh, the one and then the half, I'm just going to do every one. We have the room, like we have plenty of space here and if we end up upgrading eventually to produce more, well not if but when, um, you know we can either demolish this or we can just build elsewhere, you know I don't think this is going to be too much of a hindrance. and. We've also started to work on a couple other things in terms of the styling of the facility. So uh, we have the two Mark 1 pipes coming in. I do have the um, identifiers of the, the flow indicators on these ones. Um, I do have the non-indicator versions, but I figured having the indicators would be nice. And also, as you can see, we have lights behind them, uh, which is kind of cool. I'm definitely enjoying that aspect of it. Um, there is some weird glitching that I did notice uh, looks like it's not affecting us now maybe because I it's like a, a reload or a load up of the save in a fresh environment if you will but um, the lights weren't properly casting from behind the piping so um, yeah it's just simple um, there's like a I have a four meter high wall technically tilted wall to mount these two and then I just put them essentially as upright as you can. It's not perfectly upright, but it's close enough to look like it is. Uh, and then it's ever so slightly clipping into the concave wall up top. And to show you what that looks like. Oops. Also, um, I did notice the whole running from stationary and then jump or uh, slide jumping. That is a side effect of using the fly command. Um, I do use that command in this world every now and again when I'm recording b-roll and I notice that's what caused the delay in movement but as you can see this is where the lights clip through the wall. It's not too bad you know I, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's like a nice little like silver accent piece if anything um, but outside of just doing this which is going to be piping over to our pure nodes over there um, I did work on, which I just kind of showed ever so slightly, I did work on an exterior. I'm trying to uh, do a bigger reveal here. Um, I took some inspiration from, inspiration from an old computer case I used to own, and using lights and some clever placement of walls, we get this. Um, so I thought it was kind of cool, essentially it's just a one meter offset wall on the inside. Um, with the small billboards behind. Um, it'll take me a little while to get this going because I'll need to handcraft the oscillators. Um, but oh, that's kind of cool. The downside is it wastes um, one full foundation space on the interior side of things um, just because of how it looks on the inside here. So it's just the one meter wall or the walls that are offset. And the way I did that is with the 
uh, road barrier. Just positioning it instead of into in the center here. Just go towards the uh, outside one, and then press uh, control to replace it with a wall. And that's what I did. Um, and then I, you know, put the screens in behind it and gave it a light omission. Uh, so that way at night it illuminates, which I mean I have permadate on, um, but at nighttime it's pretty cool. I guess I could do white or something else, but I thought the green was a nice little pop. Subject to change, obviously. But, um, just kind of where I'm at. So I'm going to finish getting these piped over to the, uh, source and then finish up the exterior wall here and then I'll start working on the interior logistics. Uh, of this space and whatnot. Um, so, yeah. Alright, cool. So, uh, a couple of things. Um, I went and fixed our encased industrial beam factory. The. Just grab this real quick. That should be. That should be enough. We're gonna need. Actually, grab some extra. We may not need it immediately, but it'll be nice to have it. Um, I needed to go get some encased industrial beams, and I noticed that the way I had the belting set up with the single 270 line to bring everything up was not working correctly. Um, it essentially was getting backed up by the concrete. I was unable to properly deliver the uh, steel beams quickly enough, or rather the concrete was essentially preventing that. Um, so I resorted it out. I got the concrete and the steel beams moving on their own belts to kind of alleviate that mess. Also, the water. Isn't the water supposed to be a little see through? I feel like the volume of the water here is a little high. Interesting. Um, am I going the right way? I think so. Yes. Go straight. Then right. Um, but do you how removed the oil facility is from our home base of operation? You know, I don't want to have to run all the way out there because as I'm showing now, it can definitely be a process. Like I get that like the hub is over in that direction, but uh, the trek is arduous nonetheless. And to avoid that... I want to automate the transportation of its goods, like we have with the encased industrial beams and the products of our ASMR factory. So with that, I wanted to work on infrastructure. And one of the greatest new pieces of technology that Coffee Stains introduced to the game was a blueprint machine. And we've done some messing around with it. And you know, built like a, a minor pre-built, which is kind of nice. But, like I said at the start, I want to think bigger. I want to kind of do, do it up bigger and whatnot. And with that comes laying some infrastructure. And so I took it upon myself to go ahead and... Here we go. Um, mess around with the blueprint machine. Mess around with some layouts uh, on creating... A system that I could use for roads. And so this isn't exactly the greatest place to do that because this is some little bendy bits, um, but I have a decent start of a system that I would want to use to transport materials throughout the map to avoid this type of journey. And it's probably not the final form. <laughs> Um, definitely a work in progress, but I think it's a solution that works for now. Uh, I do want to eventually, for that system- whoa. Slick. Cool. Nice. Anyway, um... I do, it doesn't really work well, like, with curves. So figuring out some type of system where I can do curves would be kind of nice, but based on how I've built it, uh, it inherently is not curve friendly. Uh, it works on 90 degree angles, and I will give you a little look here in a second, once we actually get to where we need to be. Um, 
But the idea is it's just something simple that could be loosely expanded upon. Like I can use it to use electricity. I built it with the intention of trains working with the system. Um, so let's just get over there real quick and, uh, and then I will show you. I feel like a dolphin right now. Do it at the right time, you can just keep jumping too, which is kind of nice. And you like maintain most of your momentum. All right, so yeah, we needed to build. We need to build, not needed. We need to build some more refineries. Um, but based on how we kind of have the piping over here, I took inspiration from this design. So this is the oil coming in from over yonder. Uh, we also have, you can see a little power cable in here too. But the one little bit of the blueprints. Schwomp. Weep. Oh, I need concrete. The big reveal is ruined. Right, I could probably put some of this in here, take this out. So I'm going to just build a couple of these because I want to show you kind of what we're working with. I don't know if that's going to snap cor Yeah, I don't know. I won't be able to get to snap correctly. That's fine. Um, but essentially, we got a 4x4 road piece with some glass up top, but we have a full foundation within each direction, essentially, for trains or trucks or tractors. We have some extra space over here on the side if we wanted to run belting or electricity. Because, But, I mean, I figure don't really need to run electricity through it quite yet. Um, and hopefully, you know, with how we're progressing through this tier, trains are right around the corner to transport electricity, um, which would be nice. So we have a straight 4x4 four four road. We have a corner. I set this correctly. So this one was a little tricky to put together. I didn't want to do too much of a bend, but essentially I got a nice flush uh, turn here with the foundations that aligns nicely outside. I got the glass to align really, really well. A um, little bit of overlap, but I think it looks pretty natural. Uh, next up was we have a T-junction. So we can go straight or we can go left or we can turn it where we can go straight and then right or left and right or left or right rather. Um, and then we also have a ramp up. Well, ramp in general. And this one was a pain in the butt to build to maintain this sloped bit here. And you can kind of see like from the outside, it's by no stretch of the imagination perfect. Um, I kind of get up on top here and then build out a little bit. I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about real quick. So it's too high or four meters high on the ramp up. Um, and the intent is because we probably won't be changing elevation too much, or at least I hope I won't be. Then what we would do is essentially take this piece and bring it here. And then this here. I don't know if I can make that jump. Hey. Uh, so that way, you know, it blends in, essentially. And then there'll be some mild blending here. Like if we continue the ramp up, this piece would need to be replaced as well. And kind of how it snaps on the bottom there. Um, let's see if I can actually... I don't know if I can... Ooh, I can snap to go down like that pretty... Oh, see, yeah, snapping up is weird. So I can go up and... I can go down easily when I build it like this. However, if I go on the inside... Because this is the other thing I was considering is like... I can build the ramp up easily, but building it down was difficult. There we go. So if I'm inside, essentially, I can build it up indefinitely. Um, without too much issue. But as you can see, you get, and I also did not build it, build it center, um, but there's a little bit of a slice missing from there, but I need to manually delete all of this. Um, so yeah, we have the opportunity to build roads now to kind of, you know, I was trying to set up some infrastructure for future expansion. And I feel like this is going to be an easy process or an easy solution to 
accomplish that. Um, I'll get this cleaned up afterward. Um, so yeah, I, I built this so that way from here, you know, the intent might be to go like over and then down or honestly over and up and like build, build like maybe not, maybe up and over the mountain. That would be a little high. Um, but maybe if I can just go like straight across and then, I don't know. There, I still want to look and see if I can try and figure out a way to bend it, but due to the how it is built, it's kind of difficult to get an organic curve. Um, if anyone has any recommendations on how I can accomplish that, please leave me a resource. Please comment below and let me know, because um, I would very much want to be able to do something like that and um, you know utilize this roadway, because I really like the look. It's got a nice, like, brutalist, futuristic aesthetic with its pretty low profile in terms of its vertical elevation sort of situation. Oh, I'm so glad I can actually target all this from here. Um, so yeah, it feels very like spacey, like it, it kind of gives me like a spaceship corridor type vibe to it, if you will, which I really, really like. So I'm pretty pleased with the result. It definitely took some trial and error to figure it out, but we got there and I'm hopeful of its usefulness moving forward and how it will make me feel a little more comfortable to kind of expand our horizons in terms of how far away we are securing resources. And uh, yeah, because I mean, eventually we're going to have to branch out anyway. I'm not going to be able to get everything that we need in the desert for what we're going to actually need to get to the actual end game. So um, the other thing I wanted to comment on and then I'm going to keep making some progress on this is I do need to actually expand all of this up because we're going to have not only the plastic and oil coming out, or I'm sorry, the plastic and the rubber products coming out, but we're also going to have the heavy oil residue coming out and we're going to need to deal with the logistics for not only the oil inputs, which technically are pretty easy, um, but also dealing with the logistics of the outputs and getting everything where it needs to go and be organized. Um, and then I also need to consider, I'll probably figure out a way to put a truck station on the, in, on this side, closest to the rest of the map, uh, for a truck station and eventually a train station, technically, um, to kind of come through and work on things or pick things up and transport things for us. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get this, uh, adjusted up a little bit and, uh, go from there. Okay, uh, so I don't entirely remember where I left off in terms of the narration and what I said was next steps. I think it was, you know, looking at making roads, um, which I did. Um, you know, if some of you guys might have seen my latest post that I was working on an episode and the water cooler on my computer just started to leak. And uh, I'm on my older computer, but I don't have, I only have uh, room for one NVMe drive. And that's where my games and stuff are located, so... I don't have access to the other video, older videos um, to kind of see where I left off, so that might be why we're getting a little incongruent here with the narration, but uh, I created roads, so I figured I'd show those off real quick, uh, and then after that I want to go back and work on logistics, but the idea here is I want to get kind of like a 60 degree angle off of here, because I've figured out a, a essentially an equilateral um, intersection. So what I'm going to do here is... I think the way I'll do it, because we, I might do it a little different because we have like this pathway over here, so maybe I'll do like a T-junction, but for here, I can do the equilateral intersection, and so it doesn't look, look like much, but if we go here in the middle, we can see that we have this perfect point, and we have a 60 degree turn to go off in that direction. Looks like we actually need to go up a little bit more, um, and then we also have a 60 degree option to go that direction. Um, I do also have a design w for uh, a 45 degree, which will probably make things a little bit easier to like align, but I figure this might be okay for now. So yeah, that's pretty good. Actually, we can maybe go back one foundation, which I think we'll do. Um, but essentially, it's pretty basic in terms of the the overall structure, I think there might be some opportunity to kind of improve it in the future. Um, and which makes me a little hesitant to kind of build a road. Um, but here we are. I figure let's give it a shot. So um, we have our, this is the T-junction. 
So let me not build that. I need to actually reorganize this. So we need road. That's the ramp, sorry. Uh, road, this one. Then we'll do corner, T-junction, ramp. So we have this. I think I need to build out a little ways though. Angle it this way. Um, so it's really simple overall. Um, you know, it's four meters or four foundations by four foundations in size. We have some inset glass uh, on the exterior here. I initially had lights, the really thin uh, signs running the length of it, but uh, noticed very quickly after placing like 10 of these that there was some significant lag in uh, FPS performance hit. So, um, but it's just two meter high ramps and whatnot. I'm not sure how I feel about this edge he being here. Uh, I might consider uh, an alternative to clean that up, but um, I can worry about that in the future. So essentially, yeah, we have our equilateral 60 degree corner. This can go off in that direction, uh, but we can just essentially uh, take this, and I think if I go blueprint, yeah, I can just print this as many times as I would like. And we have a road. This can accommodate tractors, trucks, and train. Um, and so essentially we do the same thing going off in this direction. So I can just delete these four. One, two, three, four, right? Yes. Um, and the way I set up this equilateral intersection is essentially, this is just to get the angle. And then I'd have to manually construct things here. So the reason why I have this foundation over here is because I can technically zoop this through to here. Um, and a little extra effort and work, I can get this a little cleaned up standby. I need a half foundation, like so. And then I can do a full. And then once I do a full, I can do a two meter ramp here. And it kind of just fills in the gap a little bit. It's not super clean, um, but it gets the job done. And uh, actually, I yeah, bring the half foundation next to redo. So let's see, we got one, two, three, two, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. So a little bit of Z fighting, as you can see. I can probably, um, you know, go through and manually manipulate that to get rid of it. Um, actually, doesn't seem to be super terrible. There we go. Um, so yeah, that kind of takes care of the outs or the uh, inside corner. And then I can essentially just zoop these together like that. And then actually what I can do here, um, delete these real quick, is at this point I can then take uh, a pillar. Do concrete. Oh, I think I actually need, yeah, I needed that one. Um. There we go. Oh, I did. I do think I actually kind of messed that up. Um, yeah, I messed that up. One second. We actually do want it um, here because then.
Oh, you can't actually see the pillar because of the ramp. And then it's uh, flush with that, and again, you can't see it again because it stops where the ramp is. Like that. It kind of just fills that in um, pretty cleanly. So, I now have roads with um, fairly minimal effort, I would say. And technically, I can also place like a pillar here to kind of clean this up as well. Um, so, yeah, I can then, you know, take the train curve and I do it from, uh, let's see, I think it's, yeah, it's from the inside here. So I start it on this line and I go that way and then I can take this curve and bring it because I can demonstrate the belt. That. And then here. And then essentially the, the rail will do a nice clean curve. And, uh, yeah. So I got the roads figured out. I'm going to leave this for now since we're eventually going to need that. Actually, I might end up needing to delete it because we're going to start from over here. Um, so we at least have the roadways figured out for the inevitable tractors that we'll at least start with. Um, thankfully, trains should be right around the corner. Um, I think I might take some damage here. That's fine. Um, so yeah, it's a little ways away, you know, but I figure it makes sense if we're going to start building far further away from our starting area, we absolutely need to get the foundation of our infrastructure figured out, uh, so that way we can keep moving forward without too much delay. So it took a little bit of time, but we figured it out, and, uh, I did some live streaming, uh, while working on that on the roads and also while working on this a little bit. So I'll give you a quick update as to where I landed. So we have the 10 refineries each for plastic and rubber. And then we have eight total refineries to process the heavy oil residue and turn that into petroleum Coke. And I will figure out, uh, after word on whether or not, uh, we can make this self-sustaining with our oil or sorry, with our coal generators. Um, also created this neat like little S curve patterning type design here um, using the noodle method and because we're offset on the symmetrical axis here um, then we kind of get this neat little uh, actually now I'm looking at it, it looks a little inappropriate but you know the intent is not <laughs> there um, I just thought it was a neat visual pattern for how we can kind of get this laid out with it being asymmetrical. So, I've got a little walkway under here. Still need to work out, you know, the belting and whatnot. And then we also have this coming in, which we're gonna essentially repeat what we have over here on the opposite side, uh, over this way. You know, we've got a little bit of a discrepancy here. I mean, I think we can actually build, I could technically clip through these. I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Um, and then bring the pipe down over here uh, to service all of this. So I gotta get that set up. Um, so yeah, it's kind of where I landed. I did, like I mentioned, um, elevate this up a little bit. So that way we had cleaner logistics underneath and got everything in place. So I'm going to continue getting the logistics here set up and complete and then look at the petroleum coke um, opportunities and kind of see how fast a coal generator burns through it. Because I know it, it says it specifies it's less efficient than uh, regular coal. So, to try to identify exactly what that uh, discrepancy is and uh, see what uh, if it makes sense to do that or maybe to just go ahead and scrap it all. So that way uh, we just get some points. I mean, it won't be a lot, but it'll be. Something, I suppose. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this, and uh, if something comes up, I will keep you informed. Okay, um, so a uh, couple semi-big updates since the that last clip. It's kind of weird making a Let's Play when you're recording intermittently across a decent period of time. Um, anyway, so new cooler came in for the computer, um, so I'm running on my current hardware, which is Fantastic, the game is so much smoother. I feel more comfortable recording content. Um, 
and made the comment that we'd work on logistics down below and I've clearly done a little bit more than that and so I'm gonna kind of go over and catch you guys up. Uh, so we have our rubber and plastic production in place. Um, we have our heavy oil residue being transported uh, to the outsides here into uh, petroleum coke production and this is going to be a mess. Um, at least for now, until we get Mark IV belts, because I did some maths, and uh, we're producing 900 petroleum coke per minute. Oops. 900 petroleum coke per minute, and it has a burn rate of 25 per minute in a coal generator, so that can technically feed 36 coal generators. So, if we want 36 coal generators, we divide that by eight, and that gives us 4.5. And the reason why I'm dividing by eight is because every eight coal generators needs three water extractors. So 36 divided by eight coal generators gives us 4.5 groups of eight. So we then take that 4.5 groups of eight, multiply that by three, that gives us 13.5, and that's how many water extractors we need. So we need 14 water extractors, and I need uh, so I have eight, so I need 24 more coal generators. Wait, eight, 36, hold on. What? 36 minus eight, 28. Brilliant. Uh, so I need 28 more coal gener generators uh, in this system, so I'm gonna have to tear down the water extractors, place more, <laughs> a lot more coal generators, because um, these are all full up. Um, the good news is we are self-sustaining, so we are producing enough power. I, well, actually, no, we're producing a little less power than what we actually need on this system. Um, because the... Oh, I guess actually, no, yeah, this is like quite perfect, max consumption. Um, but, so yeah, we'll have excess power uh, by a long shot, which will be kind of nice until we can do something else with the petroleum coke. Uh, the one thing I will be doing, so I'll actually go down here and take a look. So right now I have just a lot of stuff being synced, like any overflow, essentially, that uh, like once everything does overflow uh, with the petroleum coke here, this will then go down and feed the uh, awesome sink. The downside is, like I said, we are producing 450 petroleum coke per line if we're producing 900 in total. So we absolutely need the Mark IV belts. These Mark III's are definitely not going to cut it. Um, but what I would like to do is take... I'm actually going to set a priority. F and so instead of the smart splitter prioritizing the power line here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a branch of the petroleum coke out, prioritize that, fill our truck stop for fuel, and then have this fuel be maxed out. And then once that's maxed out, we will then um, you know, be able to continue our power production in the coal generators. And I figured I can, we can afford to do that because we're gonna be overproducing power by a long shot. So I'm not worried about fuel um, production. Um, one other thing I, need, I ended up doing, I ended up going back to the main hub because as you can see, I've started putting some stylization uh, on the exterior of our build here. So to kind of go over that, I have the um, awesome sinks purposefully uh, protruding from the roof here. I felt that was kind of like a nice, it's not terrible clipping. I think it's kind of appropriate. This little lip down here is a little weird maybe. Um, but I think having these on the exterior will add some nice character. And then I did the same thing with the coal generators. Uh, I felt this was a pretty natural uh, clipping point for these. So that way, you know, we can fully enclose this space. Um, I should have enough room. I don't see why not. I mean, to add, just like, extend this out essentially. So I'm going to move the water extractors all the way down. Maybe. What I might actually end up doing, based on how things are laid out here, I might actually put the water extractors on the sides over here. And then have the water come in and kind of up as needed. Uh, so that we were not extending out too, too far, and we actually would afford us the ability to expand uh, if we end up producing more here. I mean, I doubt it. I'm going to be expanding like that, but anyway, so yeah, it's kind of like a little catch-up of where we're kind of at. Um, got some kind of neat patterning pipe work in here, which I thought was kind of fun. Uh, this is all divvied up in 
attempting to be somewhat symmetrical. And then same thing over with the heavy oil residue uh, export. So we have it uh, hidden underneath this walkway here, which is kind of nice with periodic down ramps. But um, I use the noodle uh, placement type, if you will, or shape type for the pipes and got this neat like curvy weaving uh, S pattern. Things kind of cool. So um, that's the update. I'm going to. Oh, the other update. I, like I said, I went back to the hub. I actually ended up unlocking the ability to build manufacturers. Um, gonna have to manually craft some uh, heavy modular frames, obviously, to get these constructed. But I think that's kind of what we need to do next uh, after I was looking at some recipes and stuff. Um, but I will probably end up doing what I can to prioritize Mark IV belting, and to be fair, based on the amount of work this still needs in terms of the expansion and whatnot, I think this works for my purposes now. Um, I know I did talk about, you know, not doing, like, a half-constructed build, um, but for the sake of my attention span, if you will, um, this is going to be a project of love type situation so I'm gonna go look and double check and see what all we need to get the next um, tier going and I think what I'll end up doing is once we get trains unlocked is when I'll really like spruce this up um, and I'll you know put in like a dedicated train station because that'll be picking up all the material um, and kind of go from there but I think for now, because of the rework and probably some potential demolition and remodeling of like over here and whatnot, um, I'm going to head back to the hub, like I said, and kind of check and see what all we got going on. Because right now, this this is working. I'm not I'm not overly concerned about it. Um, it serves our needs for right now in terms of like giving us plastic and rubber uh, production. And I'm actually going to leave these materials on site because we might end up eating them. So. And I think once, yeah, like once we get trains unlocked, you know, it'll be easier to kind of start projects further away from places. You know, obviously we need to get heavy modular frames going, like automated, to get computers automated as well. So I'm going to go take a look at well, that, essentially that beast, um, because especially the heavy modular frames, and kind of start to plan um, what we're going to be doing next and uh, go from there. Okay, well, uh, yeah, so recording an episode across several months is, uh, super awkward and clunky. Fun fact, don't do it. Don't, just don't do it. Um, anyway, so, yeah, um, we're back at the hub, and I was looking at everything, what we're gonna do next, and I think on the docket, well, I don't think, I know, um, we're gonna be working on automating heavy modular the frames. Uh, one, I, I really wanna get trains up and running. I mean, obviously, it's a toss between heavy modular the frames and computers. I haven't really dabbled with computers too much. Um, I feel I'm a little bit more confident with heavy modular frames because I was actually in the middle of recording um, or designing um, a heavy modular frame factory over in this area and in the update where they kind of changed the entire northern coast uh, part of the terrain ate the factory and I kind of just gave up on it after that but we're gonna uh, move forward with that design or what I can recall from that design and build in that same area off to the west and we're going to build six modular heavy modular frames per minute um because if you you can technically kind of like cheat if you will and look ahead and kind of spoil it but looking at knowing the fact that the heavy modular frames are so space intensive and resource intensive i came to the conclusion look at what they use look at what they're used for in other recipes and there's only i think one other one and they don't use a lot like the highest i think i saw was three per minute so we could technically get away with four but i figured why not just do six um i don't know maybe we'll do four we'll see but i think having the extras and sinking them for points and whatnot could be worth the effort um and and who knows we might end up needing to actually make more than like four so why not just make six and call it a day the other thing i might think of too actually is maybe making two per minute uh, I'm making a modular build that I can kind of just copy, paste, repeat, if you will. Um, 
not that I would do like an actual like mod to copy paste, but just the idea of like the much of the fractures and whatnot. Anyway, I'm rambling on. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here and I um, appreciate everyone's patience with this episode and uh, be, be on the lookout for the next one. And I will, I will be working on that here shortly. And uh, yeah. All right, cool. Take care.